Hey, I missed you last week. <laughs> Make sure I you heard that right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, according to my notes, y'all tell me if I'm right or not. James, you've been keeping up with me, right? A little bit. Okay, hopefully. I think I'm up to Romans 8.20. 8.20. 8.20. 8, I think that's where I stopped at. I didn't bring my notes uh, eight, to die. Chapter 8, verse 19 talked about uh, the appearing of the sons of God, uh, the earnest expectations of the sons of God, and now we, we're, we, we're, he's going to do some more explaining to us. And that's what I like about Paul. He just explains it to me to where I can understand it. Chapter 8, verse 20 says, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage and corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Okay, so first of all, what is the creature? It says the creature was made subject to vanity. Okay? The creature here is, uh, I don't really know how to, how to say K-T-I-S-I-S. -S. Kitsis. Okay? Romans 8.20. For the creature, the original formation of creation, was made subject. Hupotasso means subordinate, put under, submitted oneself to vanity. Okay, so the creature, the creation itself, was made subject. It was put under vanity. Now, what's vanity? Do y'all know what vanity is? Does your version say something different? Futility. Yeah, that's what mine says. Futility. Futility. <coughs> All is vanity. Yeah. And the word vanity here is matei otes, which means moral depravity. The whole world itself, all the creation was subject to moral depravity and corruption. There was a reason, though. And it says it was not willingly. Did you notice that? It says not willingly. That's the word hekon. It means unforced and unvoluntary. There was a reason, a dia, because of, that the creature, the creation, was made subject to this vanity. And what was the reason? Hope. Keep hope alive. Oh, sorry. Hope, elpis, expectation, confidence, and faith. Can you think of if God gave you everything that you wanted in your life, would you ever hope for Him? Could you please repeat the question? If God gave you everything that you wanted, would you ever hope for Him? Would you ever expect Him because He's already there all the time? You mean like if we didn't know that he was doing that and we just lived our life vicariously thinking that everything was just sunshine and roses, would we look for him? Is that, what, is that kind of what the question is? Well, I'm actually trying to get to, to the relationship between the creature, his creation, and us. Okay. If he had created us to where we were little children and he gave everything that we wanted, well, how, do children, how do children turn out when you give them every single thing they want? Not good, I'll tell you they that. They do not turn out good. And now the, now the new teaching going around that, you know, spanking destroys people's kids' minds. That's I've heard that true. in the news this last week. Spanking destroys kids' minds. Oh, it might explain a lot for me. I got spanked. Yeah, my mind's gone. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's our problem. Yeah. That amongst the other things, but let's not go there. Not according to God's Word. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, not according to God's Word. We, we were made subject in hope. Subject to vanity and hope because, it says there in verse 21, because the creature itself shall be delivered from bondage. The creature, meaning the entire creation of this world, will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Corruption means destruction, destroy, you know. Uh, this hope is given because of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, uh, the keistus, the himself, herself, themselves, the same. Where it says the creature itself, it's the same word as, as himself or herself. Uh, the word is autos. It's because of the same original formation of the creation, all shall be, look at that, shall be, future tense. Yeah. Okay? 
He goes shall on be and delivered. On and on. Delivered is elethuro, which means to make free, set at liberty, set at liberty to make them exempt from what? The bondage of corruptions. Mine says bondage to corruption. Bondage to corruption. You know, all things, the entire universe is in the state of decay. Mm -hmm. They talk about the, the black holes collapsing. You know what I'm saying? They talk about how the earth's being destroyed, how the, how the, the global warming is happening. You know, the whole earth is groaning and crying out for the manifestations of the sons of God. The whole earth is groaning and crying for us to share the gospel with people. Amen. The earth itself is groaning. Tornadoes, floods, it's all part of God's groaning where he wants to see the manifestations of the sons of God. Who comes out of the word work to help people when bad things happen? The, the sons of God. Amen. You know what I'm saying? The daughters of God come out and help. Yes. And the world is groaning and crying out according to this scripture. To see that birth happen. Now people talk about saving the earth. The only thing that will keep it from perishing is it to be brought into the glorious liberty that belongs to the children of God. Glorious is doxa, honor, praise, and worship. And liberty is elethuria, which means freedom. The glorious praise, worship, and freedom of being in the presence of God. This earth will, will be destroyed if, the, if that does not happen. If the manifestations of the sons of God do not come forth. But guess what? They are coming forth. That's what the scriptures say. Okay? And this earth will not be destroyed. It will be renewed. According to the scriptures. Okay. The next thing here. Verse 22, for we know, it says, for we know, verse 22, Edo, Eido, to see, consider, and we're sure that the whole creation has been in turmoil since it began. And that's obvious from the formations that we found underneath the earth. The earth has been in chaos and decay ever since it was made. Paul says it groans, sustenazo, to moan jointly, experience a common calamity. Paul compares it to birth pangs, creation, travails in pain together, all one word, sunodino, pangs in company, expectation of relief of suffering. Anybody that's ever had a, a father that's ever had a, a, a wife that's had a child, you have pangs as well. <laughs> you know because you're together you're one and we are one in the body of Christ we want to birth more children into the kingdom of God I believe sometimes when we experience anxiety it is a form of travailing we want Christ to come we want him to come soon and deliver this creation from the ultimate corruption that has fallen upon all up to now Next verse. Joyce, would you pass out? Would you pass out a ransom for many? We'll probably get to that one. Okay, verse 23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but this hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for it? But we hope for what we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it. All right. Notice in verse 23, they, in the King James Version, is in italics. Okay, now... If you have a King James Version and you see a word that's in italics, it was not in the original text. It was added because our language cannot speak the way their language speaks. Right. So they add those things and they, uh, fortunately, they tell us what they are. That's why I don't like versions when they 
that are, well, I like all versions, but I like the ones that are directly translated from versions better. Uh, the other ones are paraphrased. Okay, not just the creation, the creature creation, but we also who have the first fruits. Now, that's the word uh, aparche, where we get the word arche, which means the, 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 the beginning, or the sacrifice, the first offerings. Now, what are the first fruits of the Spirit? See that? We which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Think about it. According to Scripture, and you Scripture in your head, what are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace. Exactly. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. We have a taste, just a taste of what God is. Actually, that's what mine says. Mine, it says, within the foretaste of the future glory. Yeah, a foretaste. <coughs> How many of y'all like to just taste your <coughs> food, or do you like to eat it? I like to taste it. I yeah. like to taste it, but you, if you have a full plate of food, are you just going to take a bite of everything and then push the whole plate away from you? Like I do sometimes. Uh, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I should be doing. Yeah. But God has given us a plate, and it's full. Yeah. And we can keep eating it. And he wants us to have that in our lives. We groan within ourselves. Stenazo, sigh, murmur, pray inaudibly. Have you ever experienced that? Praying inaudibly. Without speaking, you're praying. But you know you're praying. Yes. Because you can't even open your mouth. Hallelujah. And when you do something comes out that ain't, ain't what you think you're going to be praying. It's groanings or cryings or the Spirit speaking through you. Uh, God wants us to come to that place uh, of waiting. I expect fully, patiently wait for the adoption. That's the adoption of children. Part of the benefit to this adoption is something called redemption. Apulutrosis. Deliverance full ransom of our body. The body itself. The whole body which is a slave. We are either slaves to sin or we're slaves to righteousness. Right. We are slaves being held by sin. Jesus paid the supreme price and give, by giving us his own life as a ransom for many. Now I handed out a handout. A ransom for many. I want to make sure we know what that means. You're kidnapped. You have been kidnapped by Satan and by sin. And God was the ransom money that he paid for you to be released. <coughs> so who's got some of these scriptures here? A ransom for many. We have no man can, everlasting joy. We have the Lord ransom. We have from the power of the grave. We have his life for many, purchased with blood. We have one God. A peculiar people received the promise, brought, bought with a price, a lamb without blemish, and a new song. All talking about a ransom for many. <coughs> Who's got scripture? Jeremiah 31, 11, For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Well, wow, that's good, eh? Yes. We've been ransomed from the hand that's stronger than us. <coughs> That's good. Who's got another? I have Titus 2.14. Okay. And it says, He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. I like that. Aren't we totally committed to doing good deeds? I hope we are. I have Isaiah 13.14. Okay. I will ransom them from the power of I like that too. I'm ransomed from the power of the grave. Amen. God's going to raise us up. Who's got to know? Acts 20 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock of which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. And I wish our, our church could realize what Jesus really did for us. Amen. Uh, yeah. As you read these scriptures, we are set free from this terrible death, this terrible Amen. decay. 
Amen. Even to where our bodies will be resurrected. That's right. Even where this earth will be resurrected, because it's in decay. Right. Who's got to know? I have Revelation 5 9. Okay. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. All right. That's one thing I know me and Dale are going to, when we get there, we're going to have some fun. Play music. We are, we are going to be there with that new song. Amen. All right. Anybody else? I have 1 Corinthians 7, 23. Okay. And it says, God paid a high price for you, so don't be enslaved by the world. Wow. I like that one. Yeah, I do too. I like that version. Don't be enslaved because he sets free. Amen. Okay. That leads us to the next scripture here. Uh, go, let's go over to Romans 8.24. Let's just continue with what we were studying. I like these little studies. Now, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew, I told you last week, is I make these studies for myself. And if I, last week, I skipped one of them. Uh, I, gave, I passed one of them out, and I didn't even study it. But that's okay. These are made for my own benefit. And then when I share them with you, I want you all to take them home with you. Or take them to work with you and just set them on your, wherever you work at your truck and when you when you get a chance just look over them Amen. they will touch your heart and uh, Amen. they will yeah every time I, I do a word study like these I, I get touched it was funny I've been doing the I've been doing Ephesians I finished Galatians I'm doing Ephesians right now and I did one on the prince of the power of the air right right that's kind of interesting and then about about five six verses later I did one on the prince of peace and I thought it was cool how how if you're reading and you're reading really closely, here Paul explains the prince of power of the air, and then all of a sudden, okay, here's a greater prince over here, the prince of peace. Amen. Yeah. Okay, let's go to verse 24. We had read it before already once. Um, For we are saved by hope, but, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he hope for it? We are saved by what? No, we're not. We are, yes. Well, according to the scripture, it says we're saved by hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it says, right? Now, it, does, it says elsewhere we're saved by grace. Saved by grace, right? But saved by hope. Hope and grace go right together. The word saved there is sozo. See, mine has a different wording. Okay. It says we were given this hope when we were saved. Wow, that's and then flip flopped it. It did. And then it put in parentheses, if we already have something we don't need well, well, hold on, let me read that again because it's in parentheses, like I said. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. Right. I like the word saved. I always like to repeat it, it, it because when you look it up in the Strong's Dictionary, it's sozo. And I like it because it says deliver, protect, heal, preserve, do well, and make whole. <laughs> I like to be delivered, I like to be protected, I like to be healed, I like to be preserved, I like to do well, and I like to be made whole. Right. That's all in one word. Exactly. And we're hoping for that. And we're hoping for that. The word hope is elpis, which means an expectation. We expect it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should come to We it. expect God. Some people need to see something before they believe in it. Yeah. Yeah. But the way the world's coming now, you can't even believe what you're seeing. Yeah, and there would be no expectation if you could already see it. Yeah. No expectation at all. That's what I was saying about earlier. If God gave you everything, you wouldn't expect Him to do anything for you. You'd expect Him already to do it for you. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? If you wouldn't expect it at all. You just It's mine. Give yeah. me. Yeah. You know? Then I have a question here. Why do you, and what do you hope for? That's a good question. Why do you hope for, for God? Okay, verse 25. 25 says, But we hope for what we see not. Then do we with patient wait for it. Okay, salvation comes by hope. Hope is something we cannot see. It is the unseen. So salvation is waited on with patience and expectation. Patience is hupomone, which means cheerful endurance. And to wait is apectochomei, which means to expect fully. We should be cheerfully 
Waiting with endurance. I cheerfully expect God's salvation. His sozo every day. I expect it. See, mine says wait patiently and confidently. And I like the confidently. Yeah. Because we have, there's something that we must know. Yeah, yeah we must have confidence in God. Okay. Next scripture. Intercession comes in here somewhere. Well, I like intercession. And God searches the hearts. I don't know if I'll get to those, but let's let's don't pass them out of my Yeah, one thing I don't want to do is pass these out and not teach them like I did last time. They're good. Okay, now. Verse 26. Okay, we were talking about, you know, our hope. And here it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And He searches the hearts and knows the minds of the Spirit because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Okay, um, likewise, husatos, which means in the same manner, in the same manner as what? I had to ask myself that. He says, likewise in the same manner. That's the same manner as what? As the hope of salvation. Likewise, the spirit, the pneuma, the breath of God also helps. Boy, this is a big word here. Sun ati lamban no mei. That's a big word. Yeah, that is. To take hold of the opposite together, to cooperate, assist, and help together with our infirmities, our asthenia, feebleness of mind and body, malady, disease, sickness, and weakness. Now, why would we need the Spirit to make intercession for us? Intercession means to intercede on the behalf of. Hooper in Tachano. Close enough. <laughs> now, why would we need the Spirit to make intercession for us? And it tells you, though, it tells you in the Scripture, because you don't know how to pray. Exactly. You just don't know how to pray. I remember uh, reading Spurgeon. He tells everybody, y'all don't know how to pray. That's right. In fact, you ask for things and you don't ask it according to the Word of God. Right. That's you know, that's one I think I've seen a lot of people praying, and well, they want to be heard too, some of them. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but their, pra their prayers are not according to the Word of God. I, I love prayers that are according to the Word of God. Because you know what? They're effective. Amen. God's Word is effective in our lives. It will help us in our infirmities. I am feeble. In Amen. mind and body. I have a disease which is called sin, which has been taken care of. Right. It's in remission. Amen. Right? I am weak, but he is strong. That's what the scripture says. We have you ever felt that you did not know how to pray? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or what to pray for. Yes. Yeah. And actually in my version, that's what it says. The Holy Spirit prays for us for oh, oh, my bad. I went forward. You can go uh, ahead and pass out intercession, Joyce, for me, please. It says, uh, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. We I do mean, not. Basically, it's it's plain that way. Our flesh gets in the way all the way down to our prayer life. Yeah. And, I mean, it's so true because I try, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself on one particular instance. Not, I don't, I can't say that I do this all the time. But, I mean, I'm just praying for His will to be done in a situation. And it's like, I don't want to get my hands in. Yeah. So, I don't want to pray. I try to keep my words simple. <laughs> I wrote myself and not a, get in the middle of it. Not get in the way. I wrote myself a note here. It says, when you find yourself in this situation, and when you don't know how, how to pray or what to pray for, you must give it over to our Holy Spirit intercessor. Amen. Who yeah. prays for us with groanings, to not jazzles, Sighs with grief, which cannot be spoken. The Holy Spirit will actually take over and pray within you. For He knows the need and how to relieve the pressure. This is also leads to the baptism 
or submersion in the Holy Spirit. A lot of people get baptized in the Holy Spirit because they don't know how to pray. That's right. And God will come in and pray for you. Mm -hmm. That's how it happened to me. It's always... Didn't have anybody beating on me. It happened to you. <laughs> it's always easier to pray for somebody else, too, than pray for yourself. Yes. Why is that, I suppose? I don't know. <laughs> Where did I have this intercession one out there? Well, we'll go ahead and do the intercession one. You're not 826. at the bottom. 826. Okay, it was on the, verse 26. Yeah. I just didn't write it down. Okay, we have intercession. The handout. Salvation through prayer. Pray for peace. Never quit praying. Pray always. First of all, prayer is effective. Yes, it is. Pray for your enemies, which we've done that here. Father, forgive them. And then finally, our great buddy Stephen. So who wants to read a couple of these? I have Psalms 122.6. Okay, Psalms 122.6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper to love you. Are we doing that? Maybe. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay, who's got another one? I have James 5, 14, 16. Any, uh, are any of you sick? You should call on the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person is, has great power and produces wonderful results. I like that. Prayer produces wonderful results. Who's got another one? Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. I have set a watchman upon my walls of Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise of all the earth. Boy, I think we're lacking in our prayer life. Yes. I know I am. I have Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication. For all the saints. Praying for all the saints. Yep. Okay. Anybody got another one? I have 1 Timothy 2 1. Okay. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Uh, I, oh. Yep, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, do you want me to go on to 2? Because it's pray, if you for want the way, to. pray this way for the kings and all who are in authority so that you can live a peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Pray for all. And then it goes on to say to pray for our leaders there. We've got a bunch of new leaders right now. Yes, we do. I'm glad. I'm glad we've got new leaders. I'm glad there's a balance. Okay. And when we when we pray, I, I know myself, if I pray and I have peace with it, then it makes a lot of difference in my prayer. It does. It does. But if I pray and I don't have peace, there's no end to the prayer. Yeah. Well, like you said, <laughs> Don't stop asking God for help. We have a problem in Jerusalem. Yeah. No. We have a problem in Jerusalem yeah. today. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. And the devil is trying to stop all that. He can't. He can't. And the only thing that's going to happen over there is Armageddon. That's it. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I know there's been a lot of preachers preaching for about 30 years now. Doesn't mean it's not coming. It does not mean it's not coming. Mr. Jack Van Empty, he's still alive. I want to him still. He believes they're coming down. He believes a million man army's coming down. And I tend to believe him because he believes the word of God with me. You know. So we'll find out. We'll find out about all that stuff. All right. I said it's going to happen. Yeah, it will happen. I'm going to wait on passing this one out. This one's called God Searches the Hearts. Verse 27. He searches your heart. And he knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. This is some really good scriptures. And I really don't want to skim over verse 28 because we've heard lots of different preachers right. teach this. Right. And I've heard it teach differently and even time it was good. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can use this scripture here for all. Uh, God's going to use it. That's what I'm going to say. 
for, for you. Uh, he searches your heart, your cardia. And uh, it says here, he searches, erneo, investigates, and he seeks your heart. You know, God looks hey, into your heart. Ow. Mm. He looks for what your intent is, even when you're praying. Amen. It says the Spirit speaks to your heart. He knows, it says here, he knows where your spirit is and where your mind is at. He knows your inclination and your, and your purpose. He knows you so well and knows how to pray for you. He knows you so much better than you do. You don't know how to pray for yourself. You You're don't right. know what's wrong with you. He does. Yep. Amen. He's going to reveal it to you what's wrong with you. And if you mm -hmm. listen to His Spirit, you're going to go the way of the Spirit. And if not, you're going to be a miserable person. Amen. Amen. Yep. So I just encourage everybody today. Uh, next week, we're going, to, we're going to start at 27. Okay. Uh, that way I can do the God Searches the Heart uh, handout. But I want, to, I want you to take that with you, that God is searching your heart. And God wants you to go with the way of the Spirit. And He wants you to be free from the sin and the, and the, uh, and the uh, condemnation Amen. of sin. Because He did it for you. Yes, He did. Preachers want to condemn you. Yes, they do. You, will, you won't be successful if you walk in condemnation. You'll be something else. You may be righteous, you, uh, religiously righteous, I should say. <laughs> But you ain't going to be happy until you follow the Spirit of God that's speaking to your heart Amen. today. Amen. All right. God bless you. So how was your week? Sure, I can't. Few are chosen, but many are called.